Okay, welcome to the LARP Book Podcast. This is not on our usual day, uh, but you won't know because we'll just put it out and what have you. So, hey, it's Tuesday. I'm only kidding. It's no, Wednesday. It's, it's Wednesday. Don't <laughs> scare me like that. It is Wednesday. Uh, the date is the uh, 16th. 16th of November, which means we only have two more days to wait for Jeremy Clarkson and his uh, crew to get onto um, Amazon <laughs> and, <laughs> and do their Top Gear clone. But yeah, right. I, I digress. In tonight's show, it's all about pretty much uh, Fairweather Manor. Yeah. Um, we're also going to be talking possibly, uh, well, we are going to be talking about other games as well that uh, Rob has gone to and doing a bit of a comparison. Okay. So let's get on with the show. Naturally, uh, as you as you can see, if you're watching the <laughs> video, yeah, we are doing this live from LARPbook HQ, yeah. um, i.e. my office. In fact, this is the first time? First time think, we've actually been yeah. sat around the table together. Yeah, I think it, it yeah, actually first time we, we've actually done this. Uh, other than you know, here, rather than being out in the world. Out and um, scattered to the four laughing worlds. Yes, exactly. Wind. So, yeah. uh, let's let's get on and do this, shall okay. we? Okay. Let's get on and do this. So, right then. Okay. Uh, we, um, if you haven't been <laughs> um, following the LARP book website, Facebook feed, any other Twitter, blah, Whatever. blah, blah, uh, feeds, what, A, A <coughs> why not, right? Yeah. And B, mm-hmm. why not? not. <laughs> um, because an awful lot of information and posts went up about the LARP that we were uh, invited to go along to. Oh, yeah. Um, in uh, very cold, <laughs> very cold Poland. It's cold. Uh, Roslau, I think I'm saying that right now, Rob? Roslau? Roslau. 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 Is how it's spelt. Um if you're English, and um, and it was basically uh, the Fair Weather Manor LARP. Now, this is kind of uh, based on uh, upstairs, downstairs, Downton Abbey, Abbey Gosford think, Park, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you think anything like that, and that that's pretty much you know wh- where you're going. Um, so, I did kind of wonder to myself, uh, how is that going to work as a LARP? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number one. There are no swords. Actually, I did talk to someone when I came back. I went, how did go up? What weapons did he use? And I had to resort to well, actually, the main weapons were notes. Yes, the main the, the main weapons were notes and your wit, and possibly your imagination. That yeah, helps. And m- making up gossip on the fly if there was no gossip actually flying around. Yeah, but there was. <laughs> there was plenty of gossip. There was no shortage of that. So it was, um, yeah, it was it was rather interesting. Uh, right, so we, like I say, we got invited. Uh, um, Klaus, Klaus. Um, actually invited us to go along. Yeah, right? and thank you for that, Klaus, because it's still... Yeah, I'm just going to turn the... Uh, great invite. Oh, just get, drop, adjusting settings. Drop that microphone down. We're going to seem to be clipping a bit, even though I've... We, just, we, we we spent the last 15 minutes messing about with the uh, audio settings. Well, they go up or they go down. Uh, they're good enough. Yeah, they're good enough. Um, I just didn't want to too much to hit 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 the top scale. Um, so, yeah, uh, we got invited. We went along. We got on a plane and everything. The plane landed. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I think the plan didn't land at that level. I think it landed at that level, yeah. to be honest with you, yeah. and possibly that, that level. Um, uh, yeah, I've, 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 Pretty close to doing a Ooh. yeah. Uh, in 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 fact, in fact, the pilot got a round of applause. Uh, <laughs> he served it. Yeah, where he did land because the the crosswinds and what have you that were hit in that plane that the plane literally had to come in like like that. It was <laughs> yeah. It was interesting, um, to fact, say the least. Yeah. In fact, the people next to me were adopting the brace position. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> Uh, that, that always cracks me up because there, there was the lady next to me that was like <gasps> terrified, you know. And no. see, the way my mind works is, what can I possibly do to affect the outcome? Um, from a passenger seat, nothing, nothing at all. So just sit back, relax, and if shit happens, shit happens. <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah. we got to Roslau, Roslau, uh, Poland. Yeah, can we um, go to Poland? 
Yeah. 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 And um, uh, spent a little bit of time then, had some excellent coffee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Copernicus Airport in Royal Clover, Rotswav, mm. whatever. Yeah. Top they, restaurant, good coffee. The, yeah, and when he says top restaurant, he means the restaurant that's actually at the top. Yeah, not right. messy. Maybe, maybe, uh, the, not the, the ones at the bottom. bottom. The ones at the top. The ones at the top. Go up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, up the stairs. Very, uh, right. <laughs> slightly off. I mean, not that we go off tangent or anything. Uh, but escalators, right? Yeah. This country could, could learn a thing or two about escalators. When the escalators weren't being used, they went into a low power mode. Snow they went like, mode. Just snooze. Really kind of just crawling up until you actually got on them and then they went at a normal speed. Lovely. Conservation of power, folks, you know. Anyway, <laughs> slight tangent. Um, the, uh, yeah, so good coffee. Then we met up with um, our our group. Yeah. Uh, the I bus say, people. Yeah, the, 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 the bus people. Bus, 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 bus. 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 Okay. Awesome. Um, a whole bunch of uh, wonderful uh, Danes. And Swedes. And Swedes. Um, who were as crazy as we are. Yeah. So that actually worked out uh, yeah. quite well. Yeah. yeah, they really were a good group. In fact, we, we, our introduction was one of them creeping up behind me and snap, tap, tapping me on the shoulder. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And he literally did sneak up, and his, and his head is like, Bleh, and, you know, at, at Rob. So uh, Rob was going. I was already kind of on 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 the back foot. Uh, bless him. Um, the <laughs> it was fine. It was good humour. Yeah. So um, so from there then, um, they you know one of them basically elected to drive, which I was quite happy about. Yeah. Uh, because they don't drive on the same side of the road as what we do. No. Um, it's Europe. <laughs> He'd drive on the other side of the road. Yes. And, uh, all right, I could do it if I needed to, but yeah. I don't want to. Um, no. And uh, we were given the satna from, um, well, I think a completely different country than the one we were in. Completely different reality to the one we were in. Yeah, because it didn't actually seem to know um, uh, where we were going. No, didn't seem to know anywhere in Poland remotely. No. Like at one point, I think it was trying to get us to the sword of Germany. Yeah. So, uh, so we ditched that uh, and what have you, and we ended up using my poor little iPhone uh, to actually <laughs> to actually navigate. Yeah. Note to self: don't give your pins a phone based based on my, uh, on miles and, and yards. It really messes up the sense of, of direction and distance. Yeah, I'm got a clue. Even when someone did the conversion, they were like, "Still don't get it." No. So how far is it? <laughs> How far is it? Uh, so, and so, of course, naturally, I converted it to um, kilometres, and then yeah. everything was fine. And I think that's fair enough, because I think what a lot of Europeans forget about the UK is we're in this weird, weird... We're kind of imperial measurements. We kind of use miles and gallons, but we also kind of use <laughs> metres and kilos and, and grams. The UK yeah. is not like many other countries. It's a complete mess. Look, we don't... We, like, We'll use what the hell we want to, all right? Yeah. We owned we owned the world at one point. Right, so we, we we pick and choose. Like we buy we buy our we buy our fuel in liters. Yeah. And measure our consumption in gallons. Correct. <laughs> hey. That's not hard at all, is it? <laughs> see, all all I do is, is see how many miles <laughs> how many miles are left on the trip thing. Yeah. And then when the little meter's down at, at, at empty yeah. and that's yeah. why I fill up. In fact, most of go, what's my range? Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what, what's the range left? I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> or usually, what's the? Oh, I'll just fill it up. And to be yeah. honest, like half time when I'm driving along, way I don't even look at the miles. I go, how long is this going to take me? Yeah, do it right. Well, we're in the, we're, you know, we're we're in Little Island, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. We could probably do the whole thing on at least one tank of petrol. Not not a drama. Mm. Um, <laughs> especially modern cars. Anyway, yeah. we digress yeah. completely and utterly. Back 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 to Poland. Yeah. So. Back to Poland. We get to um, the the castle slash hotel slash manor house slash whatever else uh, Klaus well, needs it to be. And it's gorgeous. And it is absolutely stunning. Uh, yeah. Go and check out the website at lapbook.com for pictures of said house. And oh, yes. it is fabulous. Um, yeah. So we got there. Uh, it was, you know, the evening was... was Cracking on a bit. It was it was dark. It was late. Our first view is it was kind of lit up from outside, and we kind of ooh yeah. Um, but we got in there. 
Yeah, we got the you know got some um, food. Got some food. I got. Um, I was assigned an out of character room, mainly because of all the kit that I was taking with me. Yeah, but I'm now so glad that I did, because Rob was playing a servant. Rob got Rob got servant bedrooms. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how can I put this? Five guys crammed in a room. <laughs> yeah, five guys crammed in a room where there was four of us crammed into a uh, larger room than I think you had. You had a large room and you had an enormous bathroom. <laughs> With a bath and a shower and a toilet and everything. Yeah. And we had to go tramp down the corridor. Bum, 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 yeah. bum. Because it's servants' quarters and servants don't get on no. streets. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky to get a bucket. Um, and so anyway, uh, I had some uh, fantastic uh, quarters, some uh, a bedroom that... Uh, um, Honestly, superb. Uh, yeah. Rob's, like I say, Rob's was, was in character, very sparse. Yeah. Uh, and this is the one thing that kind of started to hit me almost immediately, right? Is they are going for what one girl called the 360 degree immersion. Yeah, once you go into character, you're in character and you don't come out until somebody goes, that's it, end of lap. Yeah. Or there's a problem. Yeah. Um, so, as I've discussed, I've discussed with Rob and mm-hmm. one of other people, this was a little bit difficult for me. Mm. I am not a serious person by any... Well, I'm not a serious person by anybody's stretch of, the, of any imagination. Um, I do like to have a little bit of fun, a little bit of jibe, a little bit of um, shenanigans. Shenanigans are good. Um etc but as me not as character because a lot of my jokes are, are based in in the real world and I don't have many 1917 jokes I say I say I say <laughs> I say I say I say there was this man and a monkey um, yeah, but we better not tell that one <laughs> so so yeah I so I I genuinely couldn't be my normal self, which I no. which I did find very, very, very difficult. Mm. Yeah. Now I didn't mind the immersion, except where there were times when I had to pull myself out of game. Uh, that's purely because I've got a physical injury problem that's been getting worse over the last couple of years. It's been really affecting my lap, and uh, the last couple of laps it's had a, ma- a massive impact on. So I had to pull out a game, and then reintegrating myself was wasn't that easy no 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 i yeah I, I i can i can definitely imagine that um having to pull yourself out of game and then put yourself back in the game mm. would be worse yeah pull right out go somewhere quiet basically do nothing for a couple of hours yeah give myself a position yes i can carry on yeah and then reintegrate myself somehow to the action yeah um so yeah if you can manage to stay immersed for the two days Oh, yeah. You're going to have a great time. If you're the kind of lapper who doesn't like that kind of really unending high immersion, yeah. 48 hour time ins, probably not the game for you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and probably any any real real immersive LARP in, in that way. Because mm. it was very interesting. Um, we actually flew over with um, a lovely lady from Bristol. Yeah. Um, I can't remember her name, though. Lauren. Lauren, thank you, Rob. Um, lovely, lovely lady. Um, and when I was discussing with her on the way back, mm. on the flight back, um, and I was saying, look, it's, it's very difficult to, different, different to any LARP. You know, I've, I've not really experienced this level of immersion in the UK. Mm. She very plainly told me, you're going to the wrong LARPs then. Um. <laughs> well, no, I think there are high. I think UK is, has high immersion laps, low immersion laps, mixed immersion. Yeah, but you know what? What she was telling me, that's all she's ever been to. Yeah, or that's all she's ever done. Yeah. Um. So I was like, okay. I mean, all of the laps that I've ever tried in 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 this country have been the uh, okay. They've usually been high fantasy anyway. So a lot of the ringsy blah blah blah. Mm. Um. And it's usually, you know, I usually can kind of, you know, very easily step out of, out of the character I'm playing, uh, and say, "Did you watch Westworld the other night? Because wasn't it awesome? And we really should do something for that at some point." Um, where in this game, no, it was 1917. The only Westworld that there was would be the world that was to the west. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And that's fine. I mean, it kind of reminds me of some of the, all the horror games I've did, I've done, where you really don't step out of it at all. Although they have all been considerably shorter than this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So, so right. So, right. Let Let's go back a little bit as well. Right. We've got our rooms. Yeah. The next day happens. Right. We get up relatively late. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we do the the workshops. Am, yeah. I, am I right in thinking that, or do we do the workshops in the evening? No, no, we did the workshops in the evening. We had a day to ourselves, so we had a little bit of wandering the castle and the grounds. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of a chill and relax. Yeah. A little bit of chatting to people, sorting out costumes, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, costumes, we had, uh, we actually hired costumes there, um, and I you know, had to send up our measurements, etc. Uh, main reason for that was we didn't want to carry or try to source the uh, period appropriate stuff. Uh, in this country and drag it across on a Ryanair flight, which would have probably cost us more to put it in the baggage than actually what it cost, you know, what Ryanair is like. Um, and, and so we we actually, you know, had the stuff hired there and the quality of the stuff that we had... Excellent. Was, ...was superb. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I want to take my hat off to the Italia because the guy looking after and do all the crafting and costume conversion and checking and making everything fitted and... Did a bang up job. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um him, him, and his mum, I believe. Yeah, they really yeah. were good. <laughs> yeah, they really are. You know, they, they're actually professional costume makers and what have you, anyway. Um, and they just knew their stuff. Simple as that. So got the costumes. Um, tried them on, make sure everything fitted, and then we basically uh, went for the workshops. And the workshops were, uh, we were splitting up into groups. Yep. And um. A member of the team would basically come and do a little, very brief workshop, but it actually worked quite well. Yeah. One would work on on the the uh, political infrastructure, you know, the 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 feelings at the time. Mm-hmm. One would work on um, how people were reacting to things, the yeah. war, you know, stuff like that. Um, and another one would work on uh, actual in-game content, um, yeah. and and how to play certain things, right? Rob and I were both playing um, servants. Yeah, we were playing butlers. No, footmen. 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 That's right, I was going for the butler's job. I do remember now. Mm -hmm. No, (laughs) no, you didn't quite. Didn't quite get it. Um, uh, And So the footmen basically do a lot. Yeah, they they carry out an an awful lot of tasks. Yeah. Um, Which was very tiring. I will. I will say this now. It's very tiring. Um, Actually, but, we went alone now. We spoke to a few people in the lab. A lot of people were finding the fact that, that this, this lab is okay. You might think it's a lab set in a house. Okay, how hard can it be? Mm. Yeah. Well, it's a lab set in a house with well, one. It's got loads of stairs. One, two, three, four, five. So that's, five, five. So that's uh, eight, eight to ten big flights of stairs. Okay. Two. You're fully immersed. You haven't focused on character constantly, which is great. But yeah. That level of focus is timing. Yeah. Especially for dimwits like me. <laughs> so, and also, you're actually working. So you're not just playing. I mean, servant, you know, servants are heading up and downstairs carrying really heavy trays of stuff. Yeah. And constantly, you know, not mean funny, how, 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 how often uh, have I ever carried a tray of five to eight coffees or teas with a pot and sugar and all the rest of it? Never. And uh, biscuits. They're good, good biscuits there. And good biscuits, right. Uh, and not on one flight of stairs. It's not like me bringing stuff up from downstairs like a cup of tea or something. No. Oh. Five or six bloody flights of stairs. Um, and getting out of the way of anybody that's coming down. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so there was the whole sort of physicality aspect of it to begin with. Um, okay, so... Uh, so the workshops are really good, really mm. interesting. I've been, I've been looking up on Nordic Lab, and one thing I've been like, liking the look of are the talker workshops, and it's nice to see them being done by the team who really uh, are well known for this, and I yeah. think they're a great idea. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, you know, they did they did help an awful lot. Um, and you know, so uh, there were certain phrases, in, in a, okay, like I said, we were playing servants, so if one of the nobles, yeah, decided to go... Uh, you there, uh, clean my boots, right? If we didn't want to do something, there was a phrase that we could use, which was, uh, certainly, sir, I'll make sure one of the other yeah. footmen sorts that out for you or gets that done. 
which basically is an indication to that player, yeah, do it yourself, you get, because uh, I ain't doing it, or yeah. find some other sucker. Um, but I but it, yeah, but it doesn't take you out of the immersion. No, nope. keeps you well immersed. It's good. No, doesn't take you out of the immersion. Immersion, as in you know, with you saying, I ain't doing that, mate. Yeah. Um, and the, then that noble, that other player, knows that you're not going to do it, but will react as though you're going to. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was quite clever. Yeah. Because so servant, they couldn't really say no. But people playing, paying to play a game, yeah, they, they're there for a game. They, they're yeah. there. It's so the task that they found odd or onerous or uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. Cleaning shoes is a nice, easy example. You might not, you may just not like cleaning shoes, but here's something else. Perhaps something to do with dressing. Yeah. Then you had to get out. You had. A, it's almost like having a safe word. <laughs> yes, it's exactly. That's almost you know, and of course you know, mine is banana hammock. But um, the yeah. So in we'll we'll come on on to the dressing or what have you um in a bit. Um. So there were these sort of key words. If things were getting. A really bit, you know, and and fighty and, and, and tense, and, and they tense. did a few times. Yeah, and and if you weren't comfortable with that, you could basically use a phrase again. Think of the family. Yeah, and after seeing the role plays, to just calm the role play. Yeah, just calm the role play. Basically, you know, uh, it's 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 again another nice little safe word to take you to a safe and happy place. Yeah, um, so. Yeah, all, all of these little bits that, that were put into a keep the immersion running, but to allow other other players to know that either a you weren't going to do something or, or b something wasn't quite right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it Good was idea. it was all it was all very very cleverly done. Um, yeah. In that respect, what else from there now? I think the other thing about the workshops I like. One of the things I don't like in some games is players go in. Some players will go in with one concept, preconception of how things are going to be, yeah. And another player or group players will go in with a different one, and that's an inherent conflict. But it's an out of game conflict that goes into the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, people will be saying things that make no sense to somebody else. Yeah. But the workshops get away with that. They say, no, no, no. This is the attitude here and now. Yeah. This is what to expect. Yeah. This is what people are thinking about people coming back from the in the war. This is how hungry people are outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is how the country is. Yeah, that worked so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, so yeah, that was all. That was all sort of very cleverly done. Simple, subtle. Yeah, clever. So uh, then, of course, we got on to um. Well, we went to bed pretty much. We had food. Went to bed. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, good food, nice food, well fed. Oh, yeah, very well fed. Um, and then bed. So uh, it was up up again then, 6.30 in the morning for me, uh, ready for 7.30 chapel. Now, I haven't been to chapel since I was about 12, because um, my mum used to drag me every Sunday anyway. Thanks, mum. Um, <laughs> but this was actually very clever. Yeah. Again. Actually, before we do chapel... The game, Stu was in an out of game room, so the only thing he wouldn't have seen was from about 6 a.m. in the morning, maybe a tiny bit before, up in the, all the servants were placed on one floor. Pretty much how they would have been on in a great house 100 or so years ago. Yep, keep them all of the way. Yeah. So, come that time, the servants start getting up, and at that point, you're in character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, so everybody was wandering around in costume. Yes. Yes, like in costume and night, night clothes, running around trying to find places to clean themselves up and get ready for the day. In nightwear, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was I was in my my uh, uh, period accurate uh, boxer shorts. Yeah, but everybody else was just getting ready. <laughs> that's one thing the out of character areas miss out on is that that bustle as they have a whole area just suddenly comes to life. Yeah, yeah, and people are immediately getting up in character. Exactly, exactly, yeah. It, 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 maybe that would have set my mind straight from the beginning, but... Yeah, I found it helped. Yeah, yeah. then, then of course, like I said, it, it was chapel. Chapel time! Oh, um, this was... Yeah, this, this, was, this was clever. It was, it was, it was necessary. It Almost, was. Yeah, it was necessary. <laughs> and it was actually uncomfortable at times. Yeah. It but was. it was important. Yeah, so... It was um, really important. What it did do is give us a sense of, um, and I had trouble 
uh, phrasing this uh, last night when we did a, a, a little bit of a chat about it. Um, I'm going to put it, not sadness, but the urgency, um, the dire, dire is the wrong word. I don't know, it, it, they would have, it, it, okay, so set in 1917, 17, yeah. right at the point where it was just before America joined the war and things were not looking good for this country. No. They were looking awful, actually. Decidedly bad. Um, so what the what the service did was put, it's better, put everything into context. Yeah. Um, and actually get you into the mindset of 1917 so you actually, you understood uh what it was or what it, it might have been like to have been there at that time mm. to have the food shortages to know that a lot of your friends and loved ones who, uh, you know had already been uh had died over so over somewhere comrades mm. uh fighting in a war yeah. i mean there's a really good reading of a list of the deceased which was actually quite mm. sobering and chilling that, that's right and, and and it was the deceased of people who had worked or lived at the manor. Yeah. Um, and that was, I was, I was like, oh, this is, this is a bit, not, not down. Yes, yes, it was down. Yeah. Yes, it was sad, but it was poignant. Yeah. That's a good word. There we go. Good um, word. <laughs> word of the day. Uh, <laughs> flicked through my calendar of words of the day. It was, um, it, it, it was, it was definitely poignant. Um, yeah. And it got me into the mindset of, yeah, things ain't so great here, you mm-hmm. know, at this time in history. Then it wasn't just a time in history as well. There was a little bit of humiliation. One of the one of the servant characters came up came up as well. Yeah, and that was great, really uncomfortable, but really really great because at that point you went, yeah, we are servants. We don't really have opinions. <laughs> Uh, if we do, we don't. We don't let other people know about them. Oh, sorry, if you do, you keep it to yourself. Yeah. Um, nah, or, that was superb. Really you, uncomfortable, but a great bit of role playing. Yeah, or you talk amongst the other staff, and he sure as hell don't talk, do it again. Yeah. You so, know. so I, w- I just want to say big thank you to the butler and housekeeper because what they did was great. Yeah, the the housekeeper, right? Out of game. She was such a fabulous lady. Lovely. Right? She was. Oh, she was sweet and kind and everything. And in character, she scared the living shit out of me. Ah, yeah, terrifying. It was like being at home with my wife. Yeah. Or you walk in the you walk in the room. There she is. I've got to drop you to somewhere else. You li- <clears throat> yeah. You literally you you fu- you you look busy. It was really one of those. Yeah. There's the boss. Look busy. Yeah. <laughs> because she'd find you something to do. No, you know, without any hesitation. Yeah. Or at least make you feel guilty that you weren't doing something just by looking at you. Yeah, that's possibly worse. Yeah, um, so <laughs> like I say, but an absolutely sweet, sweet woman. Yeah, um, out of game. Now then, uh, the butler, uh, played by who again? I think Dan. I'm not. I must apologise for getting names wrong here because I, I, I'm not great with names. I'm no, not to pick yeah. up on. But Mr. Derbyshire, awesome, um, awesome role playing. Who is? Uh, he's a good six foot something. A oh, big guy. <laughs> he's a big guy, broad, big, barrel chested, tall. Yeah. You know, uh, definitely. And have a look at the pictures. You'll see. You'll see some of him. He's a big guy. I wouldn't like to get uh, off mm-hmm. him. You know what I mean? So um, he basically ruled the roost. You know, he he was our boss, um, which he did very very well. Actually, fair play. Uh, he was a leader uh, then of that and made sure things were done. So then it came to being assigned people for the dressing hour of the morning. <coughs> did you get anybody? I did. Who did you get? I got the American actor. You got the American... Brad Sampson. You, get, you got the American actor. I... Possibly the easiest one of the lot to do because he's an actor and he's American. He dresses himself. Yeah. Um, Although he did ask for a shave, which for his own safety I politely declined. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Yeah, good call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Klaus. One of the other old players is. Yeah, uh, can I say missing? <laughs> you may want to call an ambulance. Yeah, uh, or two. <laughs> so, yeah. That wouldn't have been good. So yeah. I was I was assigned a a German lord. Yeah. 
Okay. You explain the Jim Lord thing. I'm really sorry to gossip, but for just one sec. Okay. No problem. Okay, and we're back. Yeah. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> well, you gotta go. Yeah, gotta go. Right, so I was assigned the German Lord. Um, so I had to go and wake him up, and I did actually have to wake him up because he wasn't actually physically awake. Um, <laughs> uh, so he was like, oh, okay, in his best German accent, which wasn't hard considering he was actually a German. Um, <laughs> in fact, his accent was spot on. Yeah. It really was. Um, the <laughs> so got up um, and uh, we worked out what he was going to wear for the day out of his a very voluptuous rack of clothes that he has. He'd spent a small fortune over the years yeah. on this kit. Um, Obviously, I played the period. Oh, yeah. And I tell you what, they were amazing. Have a look again at the website, com. You'll see some of it up there. Uh, we're hoping to get a, a, a gallery up there soon, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the next steps. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've slowed down a little bit on Fairway the Post because we've done so many over the last week. Yeah, but uh, but yes, there will be more. Yeah, there will be more. There, there, and there, there, there will be a, a decent gallery going up. Now then, the uh, right, so I basically had to dress him, and it turns out that the Germans really love buttons. Who would have thought? Lots of buttons. There were like twelve on each side of his trouser leg, um, before we even got to like shirts and uh, collars and what was going on over the top and it took freaking ages to dress this guy but I thought right I will do one at the very minimum properly fully uh, etc under his direction because I didn't understand how a lot of this stuff went on <laughs> fair enough I'll be honest with you there were there were buttons in places I didn't think they, they could be buttons and they actually all did something um, like they the, the waistcoat there was a, a special one that affected uh, fixed to the waistcoat from the trousers for oh, Christ's yeah. sakes yeah. right and, and things like this uh, so so everything was, was kind of pulled in tight and uh, yeah. but anyway um, but like I said lovely bloke absolutely yeah. superb had more boots and full length thigh leather mm-hmm. s- uh, stiff yeah. boots um, etc uh, jewellery the lot so I'd address him yeah so down then they go for breakfast after he's done. Um, and I was basically kind of a little like his valet uh, for the day. Yeah. Uh, so he basically set me off on uh, little tasks to get things done, usually to go up to his room on the fourth floor stairs. Um, Don't worry, you're not the only one. I have you somebody else refer to this as staircase lap. Oh, yeah. Uh, fourth floor to go up and, and get some wonderful, weird, alcoholic uh, concoction um, and uh, five little silver cups uh, to bring down so we could share them out in between friends, uh, etc. Nice. Uh, which he did. Uh, he also had, with him in his room, a decanter of champagne uh, brandy. Ooh. This is, this is how all out this guy was going. Yeah, but he um, wasn't alone. There were other rooms. Yeah, and in fact, similar. And in fact, he he was he was he was a very nice lord, and like some others uh, who I feared were absolute gits. Yeah. Um. To to their staff. Uh, after we were all done, he was so so happy with my work of dressing him, uh, that he gave me a fantastic uh, cigar. Nice. Um. I don't smoke anymore like that, but it was a very nice gesture, and I took it. Uh, Christmas or something, it might come out and Dad yeah. will have it or something. I don't know, but <laughs> that sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, that that was that. You know, it was an interesting experience. Yeah. Um, I've never really dressed anybody uh, apart from, of course, when my daughter was very little. Um, she doesn't like me doing it anymore. She's twenty three. Gets really annoyed. Um, <laughs> sounded a little bit creepy. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> the boy, she's got a good left hook. She really has, yeah, and an uppercut as well. The um, so that was my experience. Hmm. Yeah, going off for that that first bit. What was yours? Okay, so it was the dressing hour was really easy for me because he bastard. He was he was awake. He dressed himself. Yeah, uh, 
and he was up and out early, which is good. Okay, yes, I did give him some coffee, and I did help him out with a couple of things, and we did check his cravat looked fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> As you do. As for a lovely, have to. Yeah. Yeah. And then, because he was playing a famous movie actor, later on, I, I, um, I, because it's, I was told who, pe- who people are, I can't talk. Apologies. Now I can. So later on, we, we grabbed one of the, I grabbed one of the maids and said, here's the actor's room. So we went and sorted out, tidied it up, played with his hats and his other costuming. Okay. Went for his stuff. Yeah, really good fun. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to realise, right, these are in-character rooms. Yeah. All right. So everything's these... in character, so everything, nothing is off limits. Yeah, nothing is off limits, right? Everything in these rooms, you can rifle through. In yeah. fact, they want you to and rifle we did. through. They had a brilliant time with one of the mates, right. going for all this stuff, playing with bits, bit piece of costuming. Yeah. Oh, yes, I also have now a small confession to make as well to the German lord who was very nice to me. Yes, it was I that was mucking about with your, <laughs> with your family crest outside your door, turning it around, putting posters over it, oh turning it upside down. I was told to, all right? Yeah, the Ender Butler made me do it. It was funny, but he made me do it. Okay? Um, so sorry about that, even though you were really nice to me. <laughs> but hey, it's the way it goes. Yeah, I was only following orders. Yeah. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Right. But anyway, okay, so you get the idea. We actually... It's a good bit of role-playing. It's good fun. And we really had a chance to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there was... Sorry, so there were rumours... Bounding. There was letters right everywhere in, in this in this sort of game, and what would have probably happened as well back in the day, right? The only way um, staff could actually get their entertainment uh, would really be to be reading the telegrams, the letters, because you know you just hand the letter to the servant, no, post, post that, this. right? Deal with this. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to steam open the bloody envelope, right? And you're going to read it to see if there's any juicy Ooh. goss. Yeah. Um, so I got one of these letters. Um, uh, and the way you do that within the game is you take it up to the top floor, uh, to the <laughs> to the game room, uh, hand it over. They read it uh, and see whether or not any reply needs to be crafted. At which point, sort of uh, later on in the day, the postal service for this particular game was amazing. It could get to London and back within a number of hours. Um, awesome. Incredible. Um, <laughs> Forget Facebook. Oof, tell you. Um, so, yes, I take one of these up. Uh, and basically, it did need a, re- a, a reply. But it was... Okay. Yes, Okay, no, it didn't need a reply, but it could have done with a reply, my letter. Okay, so they decided that I could actually, I, I could write it myself. So I did. Yeah, I wrote the letter. Uh, the letter was based on um, a, a brother talking to a sister uh, and saying that he'd arrived at the manor. He didn't trust the Germans that were there. Yada yada yada, and, and and that he'd heard that she had now had a new boyfriend. So she wrote back, and suddenly her boyfriend was, of course, German. Um, <laughs> what else? Exactly, uh, and and etc. And uh, it got posted, and um, unfortunately, I never did find out what the comeback of that was because. Mm. We're off doing other things, but I think that's the nature of this game as well. If you're if you're used to a lap which has a single coherent plot, mm. uh, which some some games do, especially sort of salon yeah. or smaller free forms, this wasn't it. This was sort of there is an overarching. These are major events that will happen for the day. Yeah, and then there are billions. I mean, we've been, yeah, there are a lot of very small plots. Yeah, that entirely player generated, flying yeah. everywhere. Yeah, I'll I'll happily agree with that. There is obviously there are obviously set things that will happen throughout the day evening. For instance, when we were serving the food uh, to the nobles in the evening, um, an air raid happened, so the lights were killed. 
uh, air raid siren, very loud air raid siren actually uh, went off and uh, certain characters sprung into action yeah. uh, to relay information, to relay fears, whether or not we were going down into the uh, storm cellar, yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, and that worked quite well. Really well, you know, it was it, it was it was it was very well executed. Yeah. Not just ex- and it wasn't just because the organizers had did it right, which they did. It was because everybody is so deeply immersed, you automatically clicked into what you should be doing. Yeah, you know, um, as as the as the the, the head footman, uh, I was already uh, discussing with the butler and the under butler whether or not we should be moving people into it, you know, into the storm cellar, uh, etc. So moving along you know as you would as your character would yeah, yeah. you've got uh, ladies so noble ladies there screaming Ooh, and being all panicky uh, etc and of course a few of them you know going like what the hell's wrong with you women uh, yeah. who were more based along the suffragette line of the story arcs that were happening as well um, so yeah uh, then of course we had the meal, as I, as, as I said. Uh, nice. Two and a half hours uh, of serving people. Um, much, much, much more respect now for anybody that yeah. serves anybody, whether it be in a restaurant or a hotel. Uh, I did two and a half hours and it killed me. Mm-hmm. And I mean killed me. I went back to my lovely out-of-character room, uh, half filled the bath and chucked me feet in there. Uh, I wanted to saw them off from my legs and just chuck them in the bath, but apparently that's not a good thing to do um putting them back hard no, that's right yeah so um uh when the others that were in the uh, that were in my room uh, came in and saw me literally sitting on the edge of the bath with my feet in there they giggled yeah oh okay. my God. they openly laughed at me uh but i will tell you now uh if anybody here does not or has not done anything like that and employs people i think you should go and do it you have a much better respect for um what your staff actually do. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We've always said a lot of educational, and this one would actually teach you really well. Say you're the kind of person who just bought a restaurant or a hotel. Yeah. Never done it before, but you've decided you've changed your career, you're yeah. going to buy one. Yeah, well, exactly. But do one of these laps, you'll understand what your staff are all about. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, you will You will understand what, what it's about. Yeah. Um, so... Going from that then, um, I kind of ducked out the next day uh, because I wanted to get a lot of filming done mm-hmm. um, and uh, get some stuff that I needed to be out of character for. Um, so I didn't really see an awful lot of what happened next day because mm. I was kind of bombing about. Yeah. Well, next day was all about really, it was the up day. So we had one secret wedding in the morning that was talked about, ruined, but gossiped about. Yeah. There was a major wedding event that went on in the afternoon. Which I slept through. And <laughs> and then there was kind of all the celebrations that came with it afterwards, which were actually a lot of fun. Yeah. So it was all about... Um, but during that, we had little bits of... In the servants' areas, we had little bits of I mean, just aid a servant conflict going on. Um, we had people being we, we had me annoying the Lord because I got too familiar with the American. Yes. But they did create a they create a story after my character, which I followed through out of the game as well. Yeah, which is nice. So yeah, thank you. Good story arc. Um, so it is all about the, and then it was all as things started to wind down a little bit in terms of the intensity of the stories. We started to get into like celebrations and food and more food. Yeah, and dancing. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, 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 the dancing and the celebration and the food and what have you. The, the dancing, uh, fair play, there's a, the, I, I don't remember, the, the day before, or was the day before the day On before? On the workshop day, the, the workshop day before. Day, there was actually a dance workshop, so, yeah. you, so you could learn how to dance. And it was, it was done very well. I did, I did go, and, go and watch some of it. Yeah. Oh, um, I must say, very sorry to my, my long-suffering partner. Yeah. <laughs> I do have video. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Not 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 that I purposely zoned in on on him at all. <laughs> Can't do that when we're on Skype. <laughs> yeah, I know. I remember why we don't do it when I'm on Skype. And this 
<laughs> so the um yes yeah, so the workshops you know dance workshops etc so when it actually came to the ballroom scene at the end where everyone was dancing and all of their finery and trust me there was a lot of finery going on i was quite impressed um the dancing and what have you was looked beautiful fair play um it really did it really they really did it well mm. you know um and then of course uh, the larp ended a nice formal ending a nice ending speech actually yeah and i said you know to to explain about what had gone on uh, to explain uh, who had passed away who had gone to war what had happened to certain nobles etc so it was all uh, yeah superb it was all it was all <laughs> again all, all i can say is is hats off right yeah. to yeah. to the team uh, to everybody that played to everybody that that stayed in character for those you know two days yeah um cuz i was rubbish at it <laughs> I'll tell you now, I was absolutely rubbish at it. Yeah, but well, you did play. You played solely, so there's no problem. Yeah, yeah, okay, right. I, I, I did have, I did have some, uh, some people do some very nice, um, say some very nice things about me. That when I was actually playing, um, it was only really the second day uh, that that, I, that 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 I wasn't. Uh, that even with the, even when nobody was around, uh, they'd be up in the balcony watching. And I would, I'd be, they said I was just method acting. Uh, they have no idea I was just being myself. <laughs> Worked. You know, because I am actually. Hey, if nobody's got no idea, what's the difference? Exactly. Uh, so that was, uh, oh yes, I also delivered a boxing match. Oh, great boxing lesson. A big a boxing lesson for, for the stag do. I have no idea about boxing. But. I decided to uh, style it on everything that I've ever ever watched of that period of style boxing, plus uh, using Wikipedia to look up the uh, Marcus of Queensbury rules yep. uh, and to apply them and to deliver them as a lesson. Looked well, and uh, a lot of people um, said I did a fantastic job. And how long had had I been boxing? It was authentic. I've never boxed. The only thing, the only thing I've boxed up right is, is, is a Christmas present. With tape. That's about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was good. So apart from that, so again, um, we'd like to say thank you very much to to Klaus and and the team for putting on such a fantastic uh, uh, game for us. Yeah. Um, everybody that was there, your characters are sublime. Beautiful. Um, you all executed it superbly. Uh, I would say Mads. Um, uh, who else was it? Was in in the bus. Um, Mads, on. Mads, Kirsten, okay. Anne. Yeah. Ola. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, everybody in the bus uh, and everybody. Uh, oh, that... uh, I've forgotten another name, but I'm sorry, but thank you. Yes. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you made us feel very welcome. You mm. made us feel included. Uh, and uh, for most of the time, other than when you had to explain something to somebody else, you spoke in English um, around yeah. us. <laughs> so uh, we didn't feel out of place. Although, to be honest with you, we live in Wales. If we go to North Wales, nobody speaks English. We're used to it. Flub, blah, 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 blah. So and apart- there goes the Welsh Wales contingent, <laughs> and the North Wales contingent again. <laughs> uh, so apart from that, is, is, yeah. is, have you got anything else to add, Rob? No, I think we've been, you know, we've really done a bit of a blow, a blow but we haven't covered everything. No, we couldn't. It's just far too much went yeah. on. Yeah, I, I, I would say anybody that gets an opportunity to go along to one of these, whether it's the vampire one. Whether it's this one, no, whether it's wizardry, College of Wizardry. They recently just done the music game, which I chat with somebody about, and it yeah. sounds fantastic. Um, uh, if you have a look on the site as well, you will see that uh, Klaus give us uh, some wonderful uh, exclusives about what's coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's pirates. With strips. And vampires. 
with ships. Um, yeah. And lots of things coming up that he's got. Oh, and one in uh, Abu Dhabi. And uh, a very nice one in Abu Dhabi. That's actually running very shortly. Yeah, um, and apparently he wants us to to uh, give him a call on that as well uh, and, and do a, an exclusive interview from there. So we'll be doing so that. So we will be doing that, most definitely. Excuse me. Um, um, so, yeah, um, I mean, yeah, we've done a blue, blah, blah, blah. I, I would do one of these again easily. I might not. That's fair enough. It's not your style. It's not my and style. I think, I think, well, and that's one of the important things that I learned about this Nordic laughing style is mm. when you read about it, it's read, it's written about, or it's a lot of enthusiasm. The same we talk to somebody who likes it. It's, the enthusiasm is fantastic. Yeah. And it's really easy to think of this as being something as a step above or beyond, say, a common or garden fantasy laugh. Yeah. And in many ways it is because of the depth of character and the depth of immersion and the depth of relationships and the fact it's, it's supposed to be emotive and you're supposed to feel things and yet, yet you do feel things. I felt fantastic when things were going well for my character, terrible when they were going badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that, I, that was good. Um, but that doesn't mean to say it's better than other laps. It's just a style. Yeah, I, I go to... If, if if I'm going to one personally, I go to a LARP that for me is just unadulterated fun. Mm-hmm. Um, too much of this LARP for me, it doesn't seem to be for Rob, but for me, felt mm-hmm. like work. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was okay, but my, my, my biggest issue is my own physical limitations, mm. but which I'm actually dealing with anyway. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. Just, so. so, fingers crossed. And then I, I, I probably wouldn't do a LARP this big again until I, until I had recovered. I agree with that. It, it wouldn't be reason, but feasible. You know, unless unless you could get a 1970s wheelchair over there and, and just become like Ironside. Oh, bath chair. Old, ge- old and on geese and bath chair. I could do that. <laughs> that would be brilliant. <laughs> See, right, I'd go to that if I could be your manservant for that one. Oh, I'd do that. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Right. Yeah. There you go, close. Sorted. Got any bath chairs in Poland? Because <laughs> you see, right, that's the problem. I, I can't, I can't do serious. I can't do serious. I can do serious, but only when someone absolutely pisses me off, right? <laughs> and I, I can't, I can't do serious. I've never been able to. Um, yeah, but it's a, but I would say yeah, it's. Uh, but I think that point it brings home to me is that you want to pick the lap that suits your cat, your personality. Yeah. If you can do that, then you, it doesn't really matter what somebody else thinks of it. Yeah. It's going to be the right one for you. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I do agree with that. Um, so, But like I say, a, fa- a fantastic experience. I would suggest anybody go and at least do it once, you mm-hmm. know, see whether or not it's for you, because it, it just might be. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was... I I do it I, I do it again you know if if time was rewound and they said do it again I do it again yeah yeah I would do it again um, absolutely um, so I'm being slightly contradictory in the fact saying I probably wouldn't go to another one but I would do it again uh, I think okay I'll take I'll take that back I would do it again now knowing what I know now that I would be prepared I could get into a mindset ready for a fully immersive LARP. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fair. That makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, knowing knowing that 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 right, you 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 can't be funny, Stu, right? You can make like jibes and jokes that are, uh, uh, you know, quips. Yeah, quips. I should say, um, th- that would be in keeping with the time period. Um, but apart from that, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I probably would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take it all back. There you go. There you go. Leave so. some. <laughs> good lap, though. We both done. I had to say, good, good hour or so talking about uh, Fair Weather Manor 3, and there will be a Fair Weather Manor 4. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. The return of the return of the return of Fair Weather Manor. <laughs> if it's four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. The return of the return of the return. return. Uh, two of the return, three is the return of the returns, four is the return of the return of the return. <laughs> Don't do this to me. <laughs> okay, I can have a Fairweather Manor 4 after the war. 
But it might not be. It might actually be set at the same time again. Who knows? Right. <laughs> Let's get out of here before I waffle on any more. Okay. But I hope, I hope we, have, we have an overfair overview. But I think it was a, an important lab for us to go to. Really yeah. important to talk about in some detail. Uh, we hope we got something from it. I agree. And now we have two dogs uh, <laughs> sitting right next to us that are pretty much going like... You could have feed us at any point, just out of curiosity. <laughs> so, right, let's get out of there so I can actually feed the woofs. Right then, so uh, thank you very much, Rob, for coming over and actually pleasure. doing this so we can actually get something out. Yeah. Uh, a big thank you to all of our lovely patrons who make this a little bit easier to keep this show going. Uh, all of the money that you send in to us goes towards the show. Nothing comes to us at all, right? In fact, we still have to put our own cash in to keep this going. But, hey... There's an idea. Maybe you want to become a patron. Pop across. Patron.com forward slash LARP book. Help us out. Just a dollar a month. Right? That'll, you know, really sort of help out the show. Um, music was provided by Ben Sound at bensound.com. Uh, we have got a shop over on Red, Bu- Red Bubble. Just search, search for LARP book. It's a really weird site, but the quality, the quality of the kit is fantastic. Yeah? So you do have to do a little bit of searching. Um, if you'd like to get in contact with the show, just email larpbookshow at gmail.com. If there's a, a, a topic you would like us to discuss, something cool you saw, or fancy writing an article for the website, then just email the show. That's larpbookshow at gmail.com. Uh, you can go across to the website that is at larpbook.com. There's fantastic news, reviews, yeah. etc. That's constantly being updated. Uh, you can obviously follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Plus. Just search for LARP Book and don't forget to give us a five-star review on iTunes. That'll really help us out. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you again, Rob. And thank you. This is uh, us signing out. Have fun, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Let's just uh, stop that and stop.